What should be done? Formulating an answer to this question is actually very difficult. Why do we even have to start asking ourselves this? Not in any abstract sense, but in a direct practical sense. In this circumstance, what should I do? In the very direct and personal sense of which is the right choice to make. Another word for this is prudence, the art of wise decision making. And it's something I've made videos on before and doubtless will again in the future because it's a virtue that you are called upon to use every single day of your life. This is actually what being an adult is all about and it is one of those life virtues that is taught to you by becoming a parent. Suddenly you're presented with difficult moral choices that you can't simply offload onto an abstract set of pronouncements. When one child makes claim A and the other child contradicts that with claim B, you are the one who has to make the decision as to who is telling the truth. You are forced to grow as a person because decisions of right and wrong are put into your hands and you become the arbiter of justice. Worse still is that it's not that you can even just abnegate your responsibility. These are your children. You are responsible for them. If you allow one to get away with a wrong at the expense of the other, you compound the wrong done with a further injustice. The child to whom the injustice and the wrong has been done will become resentful of you personally. Moreover, they may well start to form a sense, of uh, sense that there's no such thing as justice in the world, especially if this happens more than once. You don't have the freedom to show favoritism or try and escape your duty. You are forced to seek out the truth of the matter. You also love and care for both the plaintiff and the defendant, and you want to see them both get what they deserve. And if you are creating this world order for them that denies them justice, how can you live with yourself? If you are to be the person who sets the moral order in the microcosm of your own house, then surely you must make it a good and fair one. When you are put into this position, it changes you. It forces you to reevaluate your own position and responses. You discover a genuine moral impulse to see right done. Responsibility is in your hands and nobody else can do this job for you. You must get this right. And if you make a mistake, as you often will, it is you who has to be the one to correct it. You are thrust into a circumstance which changes your perspective. What if you made the wrong decision? What if you don't even realize that you made the wrong decision? What if, over a number of years, you have been dispensing a form of justice that turns out to be injustice? How will you handle that? Will you just double down and ignore the growing outcry against your decisions, or will you stop and reconsider your previously held opinions? This requires intellectual humility with which very few of us are naturally endowed. The ability to reconsider our judgments is also the ability to accept that we are fallible. It means embracing one's own failures and internalizing them in order to develop a new way of looking at circumstances. This responsibility scales upwards into all aspects of life. If you are responsible for making sure that things are justly ordered in your own home, why should this not matter in other areas of life? If you can see the world around you is not rightly ordered, then surely you have a moral duty to at least object to the way that things are. When you see someone attempting to order the world rightly, you should probably respect that enough at least to avoid hindering it, and if they are in need of help, however small, then it's probably worth doing. You won't see a direct benefit most likely, but you will gain the personal satisfaction of knowing that you did your part, helping to make the world a better place, one good deed at a time, aggregates outwards. The person you helped may go on to help another, and the chain of constructive deeds continues. This is how we build up our civilization, rather than in constantly engaging in destructive critique. Tearing things down is easy, but rarely fruitful. Why must we ruin? that which others have done? Where is the virtue in overthrowing the strengths of what has previously been done by magnifying the perceived and often theoretical faults? Commitment to abstract causes 
often leaves us with a sense of emptiness because the goal can rarely be achieved. You probably won't engage in a great revolution that ushers in a utopian paradigm shift, but you probably can help someone around you build up that small enterprise that they have always desired to have. And in your direct participation, you can exercise a measure of control over the moral order of the world around you. Success on this scale is within your grasp, and you can bring about justice and goodness in your dealings. Real, practical, tangible victories can be won. A just order of the world can be established in that place you call home. So what should be done? Well, whatever it is you know you should do, from your small relative point on the earth. So go and get started. After all, the sooner a job is begun, the sooner it is completed, and the better the world and yourself will be for it.